On one hand, you have people saying, well, Bethesda can't really get worse than this. And on the other hand, you have Bethesda going, hold up, I got one more in me, chief. Well, after a pretty long streak of positive Bethesda videos, they have shot themselves in the foot and we have to break the mold here. Fallout 4's next gen update is an absolute disaster. This looks like the patented 76 update right there with the T-posing. Nice. From top to bottom. Some of the bug and glitches videos I am seeing right now are pretty unbelievable. And I know some people will go, what? It's Bethesda. What do you expect? But when you think about how long ago this was announced and where we are now and how it seems Bethesda was wildly unprepared, not just on the bugs and glitches front, but we're going to talk about... When has Bethesda been prepared for, honestly, anything? Also, it's a really, really bad excuse saying, Oh, all of Bethesda's games are buggy pieces of crap. You should be used to this. No, 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 no. Putting the special helmet on the kid and saying, Well, they usually hit their head on sharp corners is not a great defense. Things surrounding the next gen update and how the community is naturally circumnavigating all of that. They were not ready for this somehow. And I imagine now the wait for the Fallout 4 next gen update was not because they were cooking and then working on Starfield and then cooking some more, but because this might have been done extremely last minute if the stuff I'm going to show you today doesn't make that incredibly apparent. Now, I come from this very unique angle of I play Fallout 4 pretty regularly for my content. I always end up covering Bethesda stuff, so I'm hopping into Fallout 4 every now and again, whether it's for the content or I just feel like playing it for a little bit. So it's not like I haven't played this game since 2015 or 16 like many other people out there, and they're coming back in. It's that anecdotal like, oh, shucks, man. For example, the load times, they're much longer than I remember. Well, games really have come far, have they? When I fired up the Fallout 4 Next Gen Update on PC, I had a three plus minute load screen. That has never happened to me before. I'm yeah, that's a bit excessive. Honestly, people complain about Fallout load times, but I never personally complained about them. Not in Fallout, at least. In Starfield, it's a different thing because you're literally playing a load screen simulator and that's kind of a lot annoying. But I never complain about Fallout 4 load screens. I'm one of those people who, I guess I'm very lucky, I see- Or even New Vegas load screens. And my th uh, my PC, when I played Fallout 4, wasn't exactly the top of the notch. The videos online, the experiences online, and how awful on a technical level the Bethesda games are. I personally don't encounter these absolute travesties, and I've been playing them for almost my entire life. This time with Fallout 4 and its next-gen update, as I continue to go back to it, this is one of the worst experiences I've had on a technical level. Oh man, the glitching is insane. With a Bethesda game. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was Fallout 76 level. You know what? Maybe there was a reason why they pushed the next-gen update uh, back five times or something like that. Four times, if I'm not mistaken. Levels of bad, that was... Uh, really a bad time for them but when you look at what's happening here with fallout 4 especially for how long it's been out naturally this means number one that it's unacceptable number two it means that they're gonna have to continue to update the game so that's why we have mods now of people rolling back the next gen update because it broke the game they have people who are avoiding any future updates because it's gonna happen the fallout 4 next gen update is borked so but that's gonna have to continue to update it and this is a problem because if you have a mod list that's going to break multiple times. And we just saw Fallout 4 script extender got updated, which means it can enable a lot of other mods. It's just a chain reaction here where I do wish, and I said this before, that there was a Fallout 4 special edition, not just because they could take all of the Creation Club content and everything and put it into one, but let it be the separate SKU that continuously gets updated so people can stay with the vanilla game safely with their mods. I, I just feel like it would have made so much more sense to do that after how long we waited to make sure what you were offering for the Fallout 4 next gen update was more on the content side of things, but also that polish level, make it a separate SKU, and then you can tweak it because it's adding a bunch of new things. Always bring a knife to a pobber armor fight. Things, But here... It's been a disaster. I'm going to show you a lot of the bugs and glitches I've been seeing online. Talk a bit again about my experience and just provide this overall warning that the next gen update you should be, especially on PC, aware of. If you get a hankering for Fallout 4, uh, these are some things you actually may end up encountering. Now, the good news is I'm not seeing any reports online of, oh, it's bugged my save. It's destroyed my game. But on a visual front, 
That's honestly surprising, because we know the Starfield update is literally breaking PCs. So the fact that the Fallout 4 doesn't do that, or we ha don't have news of it, is quite surprising. Oh my goodness. All right, so how about an exclamation point launcher? Yeah, that's pretty crazy, right? So Reddit user ChopSuey0299 posted this video here from the makeshift weapons pack. Now, not all the these are this? tied to the new Creation Club content that's built oh. into the game, but this just means flat out to my understanding that the item is not registering in game at all. And that's pretty fun. That's that's pretty interesting. That's kind of unique. So that's why when they go into third person, eventually you're going to see that the player character. Wait, excuse me. What happened to Godsworth? That's Godsworth. Okay, I have no idea how the hell is this. I have, well, I haven't even played Fart Hardbird on Fallout 4, okay? I played it once, I was fine. Uh, then I played Fallout New Vegas like a bunch of times more. Hey, you, you pick what you can. But again, Fallout 4 is not a bad game. Person, eventually, you're gonna see that the it's lackluster compared to, you know, good games, but at least it's playable. Player character is a giant triangle. And second best Fallout title, in my opinion. New Vegas, Fallout 4, and then it's. Well, pick your fucking slop, honestly. I don't think 3 is a good game. I, I think 3 is vastly overrated. People really like Fallout 3, but Fallout 3 is just dumb. You have multiple uh, companions that can survive radiation and all of them say, Oh, no, it's your destiny to go into that chamber. What are you fighting about? Well, you're fighting against other factions who gets to uh, switch on the, you know... I don't know, lever to start the purification process of water, and, uh, yeah, like, why are you fighting about that? Because everyone kind of wants to do the same? The Enclave kind of wants to do it a little bit differently, okay? But still, still, mostly everyone's fighting just for the sake of fighting to turn on the switch. Why? No one knows. Triangle with an exclamation point. They're shooting out triangles with exclamation points because it's not registering in-game that this is an item available here. So, yeah, wow. like, things such as this are happening, and that's kind of unfortunate for a brand new weapon pack with things like a piggy bank you can shoot or a baseball launcher that you can shoot. That's the worst. Uh, perhaps what's worse, though, is what we... The baseball launcher is also a complete jank, by the way. It just, you know, shoots ragdolls people away. We see here from Reddit user Pisco Spire. Uh, this flickering is on... A whole other level i mean we're seeing like infrared level flickering it is nice. all over the place in your face it's not one of those visual bugs that you can just kind of look at and go all right moving on you may remember in my fallout 4 next gen final verdict video i talked about some texture flickering some visual bugs it was frustrating it was there and it's funny because at the time i was like i don't remember really seeing these with Fallout 4, but also I know I play these games a lot, I just get used to it or not, I don't know what the rationale was there, right? But then I see bugs like this that CSS Jazz posted, which is a massive amount of texture bugs to the point where you're gonna see dog meat fall through the floor. Meaning That's that it's funny. not just texture bug flickering happening in the Commonwealth where I had experienced it, but also everywhere else on the map. Again, this type of stuff is just not acceptable that's kind of fallout 76 level of ad when your visuals are just sinking through the floor it's really disappointing hey hey it's quit and day bethesda what can i say on sleep it's fine it's fine it's a little bit it's a little bit buggy the, the bethesda fanboys are unironically gonna defend this to their grave okay they're gonna say oh it's not such a big deal well their whole you know screen is blank at, at that point pointing especially because i will say this is I feel like, and people may disagree, Starfield set a new bar for Bethesda in the terms of technical performance. I think the PC version with its feature launch set was unacceptable. I don't know if I agree with that. I think Starfield uh, created an absolute new low for Bethesda. Again, no one thought until Starfield came out that it is going to be impossible to ruin uh, the expectations for Elder Scrolls 6. But there we have it. Starfield comes out, and now there's people who were previously excited about Elder Scrolls 6 who are now thinking, should I even buy this? It's going to be done in the same engine. It's going to have the same people working on it. It's going to have the same writers. The same people who made Star Slop are now going to make Elder Scrolls 6. 
That's not good. That's not good. If Skyrim came out today, not like, you know, when it did a billion years ago, honestly, at this point, I don't know if Starfield, or not, not Starfield, but Skyrim would have honestly been that successful. Because, you know, Sk Skyrim was, for that time, kind of really good. I, I personally enjoyed Star uh, Skyrim, you know, like 50-ish percent. I wasn't the biggest fan, but I did like it to a certain degree. And I found out that you, at the start you can play super hot bone by leveling sneak and pickpocketing people. Because obviously Bethesda games have no balance and you know, any levels that you have in any skill push the average levels of well everything on the map. So if you spend time sneaking around and pickpocketing people in like two or three major cities, yeah your opponents are like 20 levels above you. And you can't really deal with half of them properly because, yeah, they just deal so much more damage than you. Acceptable. They need to do definitely way better with that next time. Not having DLSS at launch is like a cardinal sin, in my opinion. Are you kidding me? But when you look at the game as, as a technical product, when I played it during my review and after my review, putting almost 150 hours into it, it ran totally fine for me. I don't even think I had this game crash on me. Granted, I played on Series X, but... I had a pretty good time with the game and I felt like, okay, you know what? If Bethesda is tightening things up on a technical level because of all the feedback people are giving, like that's great. So to go from what I experienced there to now sinking your quality level again, and almost in a comical way, might I add, like Fallout's on this new high and you're basically giving new Fallout fans that introduction of like, welcome to the Bethesda experience at every. Hey, even, even if new people are coming in, you can't teach a pig how to fly. And that's going to always be the problem with Bethesda. High levels of incompetency, high levels of, you know, thinking that they have the greatest, high levels of hate against everyone who dares to say that they are not the greatest. Bethesda is never going to, you know, outgrow these things. You, there's a higher chance Todd Howard goes now on a Twitter spree and t tells everyone that they're stupid for not loving their games because they're such masterpieces. I mean... Most of their lead developers, writers, and whatnot have already done this at this point. So, you know, Todd Howard is the only one who's kind of keeping it calm at least. But, you know, we're probably not far from a Todd Howard meltdown if things continue this way. Everyone hears about online. This is it. Right here, right now. It's a great game. You're going to love it. But it's going to distract you a lot visually because things are going to happen and things are going to break. To me, the toughest part to stomach here is the wait. You announced this at the end of 2022. And I'm guessing work didn't start then, or it was just an absolute catastrophe throughout all of 2023. Because the announcement was, hey, this is the Fallout anniversary. We're actually going to be celebrating this by doing a Fallout 4 next-gen update. More info in 2023. Cool. See you then. It was kind of exciting. Like, okay, we're going to do Starfield and Fallout 4 in the same year. That sounds great to me. Now with Starfield coming out, and it seemed like it just was a plane that had to be landed. It was like, okay. I get it. Like, this is your next big IP. You you wanted to focus on that. By the end of the year, we still didn't really have much of a word on the Fallout 4 next gen update. Well, to be fair, yeah, I guess they did land Starfield. And it exploded. And nothing was left. It was burnt to ash. No survivors. That, that technically counts as landing. Update. And then we get into 2024. We know that it's coming sometime in the first part of the year. Now we think it's around the TV show. It comes weeks after the TV show. It allows 76 to blow up a little bit more and people give it a second chance, which I was happy to see that people really came around to that game because even as someone who's not a massive fan of 76, it was cool to see it have a bit of a resurgence here, a bit of a bounce back. That type of stuff is awesome. But at the same time, I think we all bought into the idea that this was part of a Bethesda plan. Like, oh yeah, Starfield, it makes sense. And then post-launch Starfield support. Like you don't really have to zero in on a next-gen update. It's going to take time and work, but it's certainly not going to be of the level of work that... Oh, and let's not forget by the way redfall's existence i know people want to uh, want to say well redfall wasn't a bit dead. it was todd howard is literally in an interview saying oh yeah redfall got made by a different studio uh but we 100 percent overviewed everything so effectively redfall is 100 percent another bethesda masterpiece and because wait a minute you know what's the craziest thing about Bethesda, honestly? The thing that uh, shows to me that they're completely incompetent in every aspect possible? It's the fact that it's the same goddamn bugs. 
76 had the posing and uh, this this kind of you know glitching issues now F F fallout 4 next gen update has the same type of fucking problems and it's the same engine over and over and over and over again so these bugs are just hard baked into the garbage engine that they're using is that it because it looks like it now admittedly now admittedly just to appease the Bethesda fanboys all you need to do is like you know put like three sandwiches in a row and then you know make them fall fall on top of each other and then you can say physics and they're gonna be like oh my god it's the best no seriously the the biggest highlight of Starfield was someone making dominoes out of uh, sandwiches and then everyone was spurging out, Oh my god, look at this game, it has physics, it has physics! It's the, the sandwich! <sighs> just, just stop. Big AAA launches are gonna take, right? So, yeah, of course, like, it's, work's probably done. They're just waiting until the Fallout TV show comes around, and it comes out, and it's like this. This is, uh, again, it's, it's unbelievable just how bad it is. This lack of preparation I'm talking about isn't just about the bugs and glitches. I still have one pretty funny one to show you all, but it's also things like Fallout 4 being bugged on PlayStation Plus, bugs over on Series X and S, making it a very muddied launch over there. Again, this lack of preparation is inexcusable as far as I'm concerned, because you had so much time. You, If you literally stamped the date on the calendar, you had like, what, October 23rd or something like that of 2020? Dude, PlayStation Plus is just such a disaster. Like, uh, Hell Divers 2 is absolutely getting shit on because of PlayStation currently. You had some time in the end of 2022. Oh, by the way, rightfully so. Up until now, to get this right. And your job was very simple. It was a next-gen update, which I'm not going to trivialize the work of a game developer as a game dev myself. I get it. Like, it is tough, and there's a lot that goes on. He's a game dev? I guess it makes sense if he thinks uh, Bethesda is doing a good job. I, I think that's the first that's the first thing you learn as a game dev. Bethesda good, and this is your quality level to strive for. I, I guess that does make sense. Don, there's one thing that breaks, and it breaks another, and breaks another. It's a nasty chain reaction. I get it, but you cannot be this ill-prepared when you have that much time for what to many consumers feels like the bare minimum. A new SKU, free update couple of pieces of creation club content that were already available packaged in the game boom here you go and that's the end of it dude using this weapon was such a disappointment what is this a different version i don't even know but yeah using this weapon such a disappointment it didn't seem like this heavy lift on a technical level this heavy lift on a work scale this heavy lift on a release it just seemed like it was bungled all the way from the beginning of it uh, again, another funny bug here is this infinite falling one that user Snoopy the dog posted. <laughs> Just like, dude, how how is this type of stuff happening? What about this one here? An invisible weightlifter. So NPCs aren't even appearing on the map. Naturally, nice. this has drawn the attention of the press. You have outlets like Eurogamer covering it, talking about how it's an absolutely disappointing launch for the Fallout 4 next-gen mm. update. The annoying part is... Yeah, I care so much about the opinion of fucking Eurogamer. Oh, please spare me. If I were to speak from more of a fan perspective here, is that Bethesda is just their own worst enemy. You know, Starfield is one of those moments where I feel like time will eventually be kind to the game, but I get it launched by people who are really disappointed with some of the design choices that were packaged into that game. But then they get this redemption moment if you will with the fallout tv show and their work as a team bethesda is like that uh, that that person that wakes up in the morning and thinks about how sad their life is but then takes a whole crack rock and just crushes it up and just you know starts the day like that that that's bethesda in a nutshell to help kilter films and amazon deliver something really great there something that remind people how fantastic fallout is and then you get to the game experience and the game experience should be the premium, the creme de la creme. And I'm not saying Fallout 4 is a bad game. Y'all know how I feel about Fallout 4. I love Fallout 4, but I, it shouldn't be launching like this. You should be in a moment of, hey, as we've seen statistically time in, time out with, let's take CD. Oh no, is this the 76 weapon? I I don't remember in which game I had this. I, it wasn't this model, so it's probably not Ford, but man, was it this uh, pointing to actually use. E Project Red is an example. The Witcher, Cyberpunk, like our games have the chance to blow up and we have this new thing ready to launch around the show. We are going to get a surge of new players. 
how do you make it that your most likely next to 76 introduction to a brand new fan is not ready and not good to go and it's bugged like this to the point where mods are being made for people who are in Nexus, who are in that community, to get around this, so you don't have to deal with any of the crap you guys have done. That's embarrassing. And I mean, you want you want to see something? This is how popular modding is. Total downloads and barely twenty, not even twenty k unique downloads. This is how popular modding is. Remember, modding is not actually popular. Modding's popular because everyone knows about its existence and I don't use mods but I can tell you that some mods are amazing because I have seen them. The only time I used a mod was when New Vegas didn't work for some reason. I don't know why but my friend said oh yeah oh yeah this is like a common problem or something and then I needed to download the mod that the don't know if it actually did anything I still crashed like one time but that's the only time okay. This is how popular modding is. So never trust anyone who says, oh, it's, it needs to be modded and then it's a fun game. Yeah, I'm sure it is fun when you mod it. Yeah, I'm sure. But modding is not popular. Less than 0.01% of the player base for any game ever even remotely closely indulges into modding. And I know saying this is like a hot button topic, saying that mods aren't actually popular because they are. They just fucking aren't. Deal with it. Because this is the most probably important mod that you, uh, as someone who plays with mods, get. And, you know, barely 20k people have gotten it. And considering Fallout 4 had, what, an average of 5? Maybe 7k players? This is not a lot. This is not a lot. This is very, very, very little. And it has views, but that's not unique views or anything. That's just a guy refreshing the page constantly. It's pretty bad. So yeah, mods are no excuse for a bad game in general. Are mods cool? Yeah, definitely. There are some amazing mods and whatnot. But mods aren't, you know, really that popular thing. You can't say a bad game is good because it has mods. It just doesn't work like it. And so I'm hoping that they get on this quick fix it quick i haven't seen any sort of public statements from bgs on what they plan to do with this but no doubt that when it's in this probably state, nothing and it's especially on pc like the load times everything about the pc version in my experience is significantly worse where i'm contemplating getting this mod and just rolling it back this is a mod but of mod gun by the way but there's been no word yet as to what bethesda plans to do to fix this thing up which is sad to say about a game that came out in 2015 and was just getting its next-gen update now. I will say that the next-gen version on consoles fares a bit better, but on PC, I have had a pretty terrible time with it, and it's disappointing because that's where I play Fallout 4 the most. Yeah, that's probably the worst part because everyone who's a Bethesda fan plays on PC. It's ex If you're a Bethesda fan and you're not playing on PC, you're not really a Bethesda fan, arguably, because the real, real fans are always, uh, are actually modders, you know? They, they, will buy, uh, they will get mods. And the first place that gets mods is PC. So the real, real, real Bethesda fans play every game on PC. So, you know, it is extremely disappointing that the casual, you know, tourists maybe get a better experience than the hardcore fans. But that just proves one thing, how little Bethesda actually cares about you. And I know I probably pissed off a couple of, you know, people who use mods, but that's fine. And the only thing that I don't like is the fact that, you know, you you kind of say things that this niche community does not like, but they're really vocal about it constantly. And there's going to be like all, all whopping 10 people who actually use mods commenting on this video. No, mods are way more popular. 300 billion people actually use mods if you do the math right. Okay, chief. Okay, okay. Relax, relax. Anyway, that was Mr. Matty Plays, 10 out of 10. People, people, by the way, say that he's a shill. I don't know. I think he's one of the actual more critical-ish type of uh, people who actually talks about Bethesda games from the Bethesda fanboys. Everyone else just overlooks all the problems Bethesda has. He actually speaks about them. Now, admittedly, he does not go super hot, uh, hot on them or even remotely hot at most times, but still.
Still, he's one of the rare ones who at least says negative things about Bethesda when they deserve them, which is honestly often. Bye-bye.